Chief Inspector Jap, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. Bexhill? Yeah. New objective, talk to Jap. When I see that Jap, it makes me think about that. Bexhill is a delightful town. Candy. It would be nice to and come back and visit. Jap. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. So the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot. Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. You wonder what walrus mustache. Okay. Whoop-a-doo. This hut is locked. It won't look locked, so maybe she has a key, but let's talk to Jab first. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine. Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder, but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. Here's the ABC one. 
Some D. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. This key yep. is too small. No. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the, the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Mm hmm. child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Are the common points between the Endeavor murder and the one in Bexhill? Uh... Medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. Six. Oops. Maybe if you press some server. Hmm. Seven one five.
Let's have a one of five here. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. We got the key here, Sean. Hmm. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you ever have this? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Yep, let's check the picture. Oops. There is no doubt about it. Bexhill has one of the most beautiful beaches in the area. Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo?
This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the killer. Cert. But how many times will he kill before I do? Many times. Uh, hmm. With all these tourists, these shops must be thriving. I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. A minute, huh? Um... What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Well, it says chance and not change. <laughs> It's a well-laid table, nothing's out of place, and above all... This is a well-laid table. No creases. Nothing. It's weird that he didn't say that to me. Not. Make sure we look good. Get some ego po ego poems. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. Conversation there, but no. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? This page won't help me. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer? This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one.
was probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own, a whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Hmm. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee, her private life was none of my business. <laughs> you did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him, all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Do you think there may have been some problems between them? I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me, I have work to do. <laughs> The customer who ordered a whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. Let's -a go. I think we've gone past the Barnard's house. Luckily for me, you have an exceptional sense of direction, Hastings. You are a great explorer. Oh, it's right here. I thought we had to get the drive to get there. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry, we will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair. 
the very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor oh, mummy. Yeah, the black stockings were important that she didn't wear. Mm -hmm. We can go up there. Or. Let's see what we got in here first. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one off, without a doubt. Family photos and fires. Just to be looked at in the mirror again. What is she feeling at the moment? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. I don't think she was jealous of her sister. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. It would not be polite to visit the house without being invited to do so. Talk to her then. Your sister had a fiance, I believe. Yes, he's called Donald Fraser, a very nice man. Do you know where we might find him? He works at the estate agent's Court and Brunskill. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. <laughs> Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. 
It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the ginger cats. I would like to talk with him before the chief inspector finds him. Okay, let's go up. More ego points, come on. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Hmm. A box of new stockings. And, uh, the previous uh, husband, friends, he had also a box of stockings. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. Do oyster? No, lobster. But he liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Something on this clock bothers me. Okay. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. This metal disc is stuck. Find something about the time. Strange. A sheet of paper. Nothing seems to be happening here either. Though. The 
cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. are blocked by these wooden panels. Nothing happens with either. This metal disc is stuck. The thing is, so it has something to do with the uh... sure. There must be something in here with... Hmm. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. This small key should be useful to me. I've finished with this subject. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? Say much. Else in here, so we're missing something here. Something on this clock bothers me. There, that's better. Why did that work now all of a sudden? This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened.
What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Look, a key. This could be useful. This code probably has something to do with the mechanism above the clock. Hmm. <coughs> okay. Three. Two. And one. And two. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. Let's see, so this one should be in position. Which one is one though? That one? That one. This one should be in position number two. This one should be in uh, three. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. No, the key does not fit this cog. Another key that I've never found. to be moved east then. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. 
Right, this part is so no, The key does not fit this cog. Mm, oh, wait. Oh. Uh, let's see. I definitely need. Oops. <clears throat> ah, something clicked on the front of the clock. This could be useful. Betty. I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. Damn, she, uh, she had uh, several people, huh? Okay, uh, did we get everything in here now, or...? A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. Listen to them. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? This looks like solfege. This looks like solfege. I thought I was going to turn it or something. Mm. Okay, so. One, one. Plus two, only two. Yeah. This looks like solfege. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. I cannot open it. It looks like the mechanism is blocking it. Oh, 
but uh, can I? That doesn't work. I must. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten. Step. How the heck do I get this one up then? I can't rotate. It's like I'm supposed to. That doesn't work. No. Somehow we need to be able to get this one up. Mm -hmm. right. I cannot open it. It looks like... There is bound to be a clue somewhere. This is two, two, two equals. Hmm. Two plus two plus two. Hmm. Three equals six. Because these are twos, if I remember it right. Mm hmm. But how is that? That's it's a, it's a four in the end. Hmm. Hmm. Because they all were in the same direction, right? There is bound to be a clue somewhere. into a okay I get it <clears throat> we have to make two of them at once and one is upside down one instead Plus one plus one. No, oh, wait. <clears throat> hmm. One of those is a one, though. It doesn't quite make any... Oh, wait, wait, okay, maybe it's that way, okay. Um... These are ones... And these are twos... Distant. 
There is bound to be a clue somewhere. Uh, correct. Hmm. It looks like something goes in here. Seven eighty. What the heck does that mean? That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. Yeah, we need to be able... Doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. <clears throat> yeah, I would like to lift this one up, but what the f that doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. I'm just wondering. Can't grab it. I'm trying to interact. I can't do anything with it. We crank this one up all the way we can. Hmm. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. Is this supposed to be something with that code on seven eighty? Now you crank it up, but then when you're supposed to lift this one up, then put the record in. But I can uh, lift it up, though. Which... You know, this needs to be lifted. But I can't um, do anything with it. Thank you. 
Let's see, so this is one. This looks like solfege. There is probably a link with what I saw in the drawer. I'm just wondering... Hmm. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. I was thinking, but it, it can't be decided on. the sound of a mechanism being triggered. I'm trying to figure this one out. How the heck can it be become that? I'm curious how it becomes that though. That one doesn't quite make any... I wonder if it is, it's two of these one and that comes into... Hmm. Must be. This open up. Uh huh, this is where the. Mm -hmm. I just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. That's why I couldn't. Said you should rest your voice. 
You're such a killjoy sometimes. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her throat? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Yeah, I understood it in the end. I just took me a while to... I was look, looking at, you know, addition, but it's actually from the tree how it goes down. It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. Uh, for me? Oops. Yes. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she's studying in this manner? Because how the tree is, you know, you have that uh, mark um, that is supposed to equal. In the previous ones, if you look at... Uh, look at it again. I've finished with this subject. Just imagine, you know, uh, let's see if we can do this. That, uh, whatever that sign was, uh, turning to... Uh, what was it? Um, yeah, the one note with one, and then it turns into... Imagine the tree goes something like that, you know, it starts up there and then it turns into one of the other ones, then it turns into two of the other ones. But it goes down in the tree, you know, so you have to think where that sign was, then it turns down to one of those, and then it turns splits up to two of the other ones. So it's like you have to follow the tree. <clears throat> Yeah, no. Oops. Got that didn't have the camera. But it's like they made the perfect. I went with the addition, you know, yes, one one one. In a way, she was First, pretty, so, and but... he. Well. He's a bright man, with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always then attentive I was thinking, and okay, generous. One oh, with two, you know, gentlemen. one little blub, and then with two I blubs and three blubs so equals four, but. You must have heard wrong. You have not mentioned Donald's jealousy. There's nothing to say. You are a poor liar, Mademoiselle Bernard. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot, but I do not see why you are interested in our humble little crime. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man. Slightly reserved, too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. 
She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day, one day. Well? He'd commit murder. Mm. Do you think that is what happened? No, Mr. Poro, I don't believe that. You yourself said he may be a recidivist madman. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Yeah, it was a little bit of a weird hustle, but... Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. This one. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Bum, 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 bum. You seem Fraser, Hastings. What is your feeling? He's a big chap. Fragile isn't exactly the word that springs to mind. I talked to his landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at 11. Fraser wasn't home yet. Yeah. Megan Barnard said he's a reserved character but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. Be at the cafe. Come on, firewall. Step on it. I'm getting some more coffee. We're right back.
end up below 100k if you keep that up. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You heard your Poirot? Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me. Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. This man looks suspicious. Donald Fraser is in a terrible state, as if he hadn't slept all night. And he's drinking white horse. <laughs> Leave me alone. How about I don't? Tell me that it's a mistake. That Betty isn't dead. Sadly, your lady friend has been murdered, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. Did you visit Betty yesterday afternoon? No, I haven't seen Betty for two days. I was at the office yesterday afternoon. Can you prove that? Of course. But why this question? Betty died yesterday evening, didn't she? Yesterday, a guest came to the ginger cat alone and ordered a white horse whiskey, and by the look of it, you also appear to be fond of this brand. Yes, it's a good whiskey and not cheap. I only drink it on special occasions. Or tragic ones. I understand. Do you know what Betty's plans were yesterday evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. <laughs> Yet, Megan only returned to Bexhill this morning, Mr. Fraser. I didn't know. Right. May I ask you what you were doing yesterday evening? I spent the evening working. Your colleagues can confirm this? No. I often take work home with me. Hmm. Therefore, you have no alibi, Mr. Fraser. That's right. But that doesn't make me a murderer, Mr. Poirot. I would like you to leave now, please. Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poirot. I thought the victim's young man was here. Yes, he's all yours, Chief Inspector. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. <laughs> Enter a crime scene.
Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree, without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. Hmm. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. Both of them walk slowly to hunt number six. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a code. Keep walking, then she removes a belt. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, Moshe Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. Generous? The murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless, but not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. London? Jap has decided to reveal details to the press. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. Hey, Murphys. How are you doing? Mm. By the way, Stings, what day is it? Well, looking at the calendar, it's... 
The thirtieth. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. Mon Dieu, it is already ten o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Hello, chap. We received a new letter from ABC in the ten o'clock post. Where and when? In Churston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Mm, Call me back. Kinda. Yeah, I guess you could say it is pretty much like a Sherlock Holmes. We have two. Daily Flicker. July 30, 1935. ABC affair. No progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexhill and Andover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Yeah, Unfortunately, okay. they have not yet Just helped to find him. Busy day. Daily Flicker, July the 26, 1935. The Bexhill Horror. Young maid strangled on the beach. Killer struck <laughs> at midnight. Yeah, I got woken up this morning too. You know, it's always lovely when your parents call you in, uh, so early in the morning. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute Wake you disaster. Up. That is no way to pack suitcases. Like weekend, hello. Let Evans, me sleep. We must in. hurry. <laughs> we have to get to Churston before the murder. Just because my dad goes up like crack of dawn even on weekends, you know, since he's retired and all, so it's like Nah, uh, well, luckily I don't live with my parents, but you know. He tends to call and like hello, and then we talk about, you know, how the week been, but then it's like sports since we both like uh, football. And uh, we follow Premier League very a lot. And he likes calling very early for some reason. Your height is things. It is an emergency. At last, Poirot, you're being reasonable. Poirot, you were right. <laughs> I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Churston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Yeah, Did I remember you, do you told purpose? me that before. Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. missed the 6.45 train, but we have plenty of time to catch the night train. I said yes, it's kind of like Sherlock Holmes games. Oops. You have to, um, you know, find clues and... Do some puzzles. He sings photo album. He is very proud of his bag.
Hmm. Miss Haste, Hastings tore the envelope. Has it told him about the tell the killer's letter? How he did not have to throw it on the ground. Not now at White Horse Mansions or White Horse Court, try a White Haven Mansion. Poor Mr. Poirot. Not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps? Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it is an easy one. Cheston on the 30s. Do try and do something about it. It is a bit dull having it all my own way, you know? Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Hey, you can listen to this, Murphys. It is a pleasure to be working with you again. I have missed you these past few years. To make sure we are ready. It is not the right time. Gotta compare right. him. Let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, yes some good do music. Weird. That's what it is. And he added vocals to it. Yes, the eye character in the two letters great. do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. <laughs> yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Okay, mm -hmm. pump it up with another song then. You know, with that one instead.
The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap. <laughs> Are you afraid? I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. <laughs> 